good I guess morning. we should just say good good day. Since, good day. You know, People could be listening to this at any time. That's right. You have access at your fingertips. Right. Welcome to you the could show. Be listening to this in the middle of the night. Episode three oh nine. I do think there's Whoa. a lot of like moms and parents who maybe are up with their kids and like listen. Yes. Or how about those kids who only sleep when they're in the car, and so <gasps> the parents have to just drive around neighborhoods in circles. <laughs> right. I hope they're listening to us, and we we feel for you. Yeah, we are there with you in spirit, cheering you on, clapping. And Mm -hmm. uh, that's all we really want. Just clap for us. Yeah, all the time, anytime. And we'll return the favor. I do have a couple orders of business. Let's see. I love some business. Uh, First of all, I wanted to remind people that we have a website, thebraincandypodcast.com, that's recently been zhuzhed. Oh, it looks so good. It looks so cute. It uh, looks badass. Yeah, it's funny that you say that because I was interviewing an author and he said, by the way, which person are you on? You know, who am I talking to? Are you the one with the tattoos or or the other one? And then he's like, is your website the one that says badass bitches at the top? (laughs) I was like, that's us. (laughs) Hell yeah. You've come to the right place. Don't you forget it. (laughs) But um, also on the website is a list of uh, our partners. And so if you're ever like listening and hear a code or whatever to one of our partners, then you can go there to check. Because I know sometimes people are driving or working out and they can't remember the code, but they want to support us. And we love that. I check that frequently. Me too. Because whenever I'm I'm ordering stuff, I don't remember. So... It helps. Us I got out some so stuff much. from ModCloth recently and had to go on there and check it out. See, you're just like stars. They're people too. Right. I'm like, <laughs> I need my own coupon code. <laughs> um, what else? Uh, 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 I guess that was the main thing I wanted to tell people. But anyway, hi, Sarah. I- I'm sure everybody knows we have a book club and I'm sure they know that they can join. I hope they do join because the book club is so great. It's my favorite thing that we do. Me too. And let me tell you, my book for this month... Oh my God, I love it. Sarah, as soon as you described it to me, I was like, well, now I have to read that. I mean, it's awesome. It's awesome. I'm so glad, Suze. What's the name of it? It's called Lab Girl. Yeah. And to me, that title wasn't appealing. But then when you were like, this is the scoop, I was all over it. It is so beautiful. It's a woman's story about her journey through this field of science. And like you hear her background, her life story. She's also struggles with mental health issues. And she, she narrates or describes a manic episode that she has in the most accurate, most perfect way I've ever heard it like described. And it was like, oh my God, that is exactly inside the head of somebody who is having a you know manic episode and talks about the good that comes from that what it's hmm. like and then she so she tells her whole story about her journey through uh, academia and becoming a professor and all the um you know all the struggles they have in the world of science and every chapter she then uses a uh, some sort of plant um like how a seed grows or the bark on a tree as a metaphor for what she's going through in her life. So one chapter will be about her and then the other chapter will be about nature. But she doesn't say like, well, this is exactly like when I, you know, she doesn't explain the metaphor. It's just so well written that you can see. You're like, oh my God, this is exactly what she was talking about in her own life. It's so perfect. I love that. And when you described it, I just thought that is something everybody needs to hear. It's like- There's a life lesson in every Mm -hmm. single chapter. Yeah, that's so cool. But people, if they join the book club, then we meet once a month online and all the members come and we talk about the books and it's really cute. We have a nice time. It's like free therapy. Oh my God. Yeah. (laughs) And there's wine, but you have to bring your own. (laughs) Yeah. Because it's always after our Q and A's too. Yeah. And so we're always like two glasses deep by that point. Oh, there's so many tears. It's so great. (laughs) It's so great. Uh, Okay. Also, did you happen to think about any recommendations you have for our listeners because we said we were going to make a couple i made a whole list yes i I went nuts on this and then i was like oh my god this is my new favorite thing to do isn't it i kept product review that i things i love all right this is going to be good should we do that and i forgot a whole range of like really inexpensive things like stuff that you are spending money on now that you shouldn't that you can get for way cheaper oh my god and then some like luxury items that are like this is a complete waste of money but it's so fun to have you're gonna be our life coach 
Oh, cool. Thanks. At I'm least really for products. I'm excited about this. Um, do you want to start with that now? Do you want to do that? Oh, well. Or what are you what, feeling? What? I mean, what 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 do you got? Do you got any other news? Any let's, updates? Well, and... let's start with a raucous debate, which oh, okay. I read an article that I feel like <laughs> I cannot figure out what you're going to say to this, but Oh, I love that. There's a guy, a man who's a father and his son is a young adult, I guess maybe 18 in that mm-hmm. range and uh 18 to 20 and um his son is severely disabled physically and um, mentally, and I believe has not. I think it's cerebral palsy. Okay. And once his son got to be of like the age of puberty, mm-hmm. he noticed that his son, who has a an IQ of I think they said twenty. Oh my God. Yeah. Okay. Um, so he was getting erections, you know, like during bath time and stuff. Uh-huh. And the dad started thinking about like, what is the protocol for this situation where uh, the body is adult, uh-huh. but the mind uh-huh. would be compared to a younger person. Uh-huh. And he started researching it and found that like there, it was taboo that nobody wants to talk about yeah. disabled folks in terms of sexuality. Yep. And so he decided that he was going to manually masturbate. No, nah, I don't like that. Okay. No, nope. <laughs> no, okay. Nope. Nope. <laughs> Just listen. And so the he did, and the son had profound relief, as you might s- suspect. Yeah. And so then they made it a, a regular part of their the therapy that oh. the dad was already doing. And he wrote a blog post about it, and obviously it's controversial and whatever. And he's saying, like, this is just an extension of the therapy I was already providing, and why shouldn't he get that relief that every other person can get when they, whenever they want it? And I wondered what you oh, think. God. <laughs> wow. Wow. The reason why I, oh, God, this is really tough. Well, and this is just sort of like for, we're just having like parlor talk here. This is not diagnostic or. We don't know what the hell. I mean, this is like, they don't know. The doctors don't know. No, I have no, this is (laughs) absolutely zero of that. This is just opinions. Here we go. Um, My first instinct is to say that it, despite his IQ, there's still some biological like. I feel like what happens is it's confusing the relationship of the father and the son. Yes. I think that I understand the need for relief in that area, especially if, you know, that is something that's happening frequently. And it's kind of like that's what nocturnal emissions are supposed to do. Right. You know, so your body is designed to relieve itself, Mm -hmm. you know. So that I feel I don't – and if it becomes a regular part of the ritual or routine – then it it's oh that can be that that is messy and so i feel like if that were something that you know doctor was like yes he needs that to happen then he needs to go to a doctor to do that well and i just feel like if somebody cannot give consent right then to me this is a case closed situation case closed absolutely i totally agree with that yeah i think that that is really mixing up you know that child has you know has a a specific relationship with that the caregiver and i feel like you're just strengthening some wires that don't need to be strengthened with the relationship between the father and the child yeah like that you know there are female issues where you know we were talking about this vaginismus before that i couldn't think of the name for where a woman's vaginal uh muscles will become so tight that they she can't physically insert anything into her vagina a tampon you know god forbid a penis anything like that and so they go to doctors who specialize in this where they work with them with dilators that are these um they range in like small sizes to like actual size of you know like a phallic size um of these like plastic um you know like like fake penises essentially (laughs) and but they don't look like that they look just like 
I don't know, like little rockets. It's weird. Oh my God. <laughs> um, but they use that to, to slowly get the woman, you know, more comfortable. And of course we're dealing with somebody here who has no mental incapacities, okay. but it's done in a professional environment. It creates a level of comfort. It's, I feel like that kind of, I don't know. I just at home, it needs to be done. Ugh. Yeah, like, I'm not into it. There are and, people for, who do this. Well, and I think, okay, like you, if this, if you're the parent and you want to talk to your physician about it and what mm-hmm. are the options and things like that, that's one thing. But to be like, I'm going to take this into my own hands, literally, and um, provide a service that may or may yeah. not be wanted, then that's, a, no, that's I'm, no good. And I'm definitely with you on the consent thing. That yeah. That is the case closed, can't yeah. give consent. There's no, and there's no, there's nothing scientifically, there's no thing that says you must release yourself <laughs> right, daily. Right, 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 right. It's not like it doesn't urine. Exist. Right. Yeah. Just don't do it and then he'll have nocturnal emissions. Like the body gets, does that. I mean, for goodness sake, Sigmund gets a boner. I'm not sitting there going, well, I guess I got to jerk him off. <laughs> My God. Well, there's really no way to segue f- for this one from where we were with her dog. But I will anyway. Um, one thing that I do approve of is using hers to get your birth control. Uh, or any other thing, any other like medication you could there's other stuff there too anti-anxiety yes. it is my favorite Sus. i know i was gonna say to you because even though they have hers has birth control and it's so easy you just go on and you can have a consultation with a doctor to find out what your needs are and what they can offer and get your prescription from them but sarah also used hers for other things and said it's super easy and great i love it it's basically a women's wellness brand that puts you, your body back in your control and you don't have to go to the doctor and make an appointment and pay all that money to, you know, basically waste your time uh, when it's not necessary. You just go on hers and you can get the birth control that you need so easily and it's 30 bucks and you don't need insurance. And it's great. That is a game changer for me because, I mean... For every woman. I mean, if you live in a place where you don't have, you can't go easily. I mean, oh God, I, when I went to get birth control at the doctor, it took me three appointments and then nobody ever followed up. And Mm -hmm. I ended up having to call going, Hey, remember me? And then I just said, forget it. And that's when I went to hers and you saw that wonderful video I posted of me getting everything I needed right there. Yeah. It's so easy and everybody's different. So for hers offers 10 well-known birth control options. If you order now, you, our listeners get their first month of birth control from forhers.com for just five bucks right now while supplies last and subject to doctor approval. See their website for full details. Go to forhers.com slash brain. That's F-O-R-H-E-R-S dot com slash brain. And uh, restrictions apply. See website for full details. Sweet. Okay. After that conversation. Yeah. Um, what about how there was... One of our brainiacs, you know how they send us funny stuff. Love it. Yes. There, the headline was. Let me read it. Butthole licking. <gasps> <laughs> butthole licking bandit. No, no, no. Butthole tickling bandit has been caught. Oh my god! Well, that's a very specific area. <laughs> it's a very specific kind of bandit. I mean, also like you, to tickle a butthole. Well, that's yeah. in there. Well, <laughs> Wait, how's he getting that gaining access? Sarah, he is breaking into people's homes Stop. and tickling their buttholes. Stop it. What if you woke up to somebody fingering your beehole? Well, at first that I would have been like, know. honey. <laughs> that you didn't know. Honey. I mean, I would freak the fuck out. Yeah. You there, I'm pretty sure waking up to anybody tickling any area would freak me the fuck out. <laughs> you start with my toe and I'm still going to get a little nervous. <laughs> what the goddamn hell? Well, and I don't believe the article is really short, so I don't know the facts, but I don't believe that he was actually burgling anyone. He wasn't burgling. He right. Was this, just is, this isn't bad. Bungling. Bungling. Right. Stop. <laughs> Oh my god! And I just, what if you wait? Is that what you guys think? Is that like what bungling means? No, to you? Is, <laughs> no. 
Because no. I was like, that's hilarious. If bungling has anything to do with butts and that's what you call your, you, each other and your family, since Landon calls me poops. That is such a good point. I was like, that would be hilarious. We both have like butt code names. <laughs> Landon calls Sarah poops. And in our family, yes. all three of us call each other bungle. But the reason why I call it when I just then called it bungling is because every time I call Lincoln or Adam bungle, I always think of when I think it's Beavis and Butthead, don't they? Always yes, say, it is. What? Bunghole. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So now it's like it's a double entendre officially. It's so great. Which <laughs> also, let me tell you, a bunghole is a real thing. It's a it's the in a, a wine uh, barrel. No. The ho- the hole that's on top that gets plugged. Yeah. Where they, is called a bunghole. Get out. And don't think that I didn't say that I like make the huge mistake when we went when we were on Rivals <laughs> 3, we went and toured a winery which they never aired. I don't know why it was so great. Well, probably cuz you know things I like are boring on television. Right. right. Um so we went to the winery and uh coincidentally it's a wine that Landon ha- orders all the time. And like it was a super small winery in Argentina, and we even have a bottle of it right here. I'm like, oh my god, I cannot escape the, even the winery that we visited. It's <laughs> delicious wine, anyway. Um, but when we were there, I made the mistake of telling Johnny, like, oh, you know that thing over there? That's called a bunghole. And no. then everywhere we went, he was like, can you show me where the bunghole is? Can you point to the bunghole? Where's the bunghole? He's the like, oh, worst. God. The worst. But it's I. I mean, I. I uh, what am I, I? I was asking for it when I. Well, <laughs> yeah, what I think you walked was right happen. into that. Yeah, I just like loaded the gun and handed. Well, because it to you're him. on the same scale. Uh, like anyone on reality TV would find that funny, right? <laughs> and so do you. But then yes. he just takes it too far, <laughs> right? Yeah, that's totally true. That's like kind of like in general with everything. And yeah. I feel like Johnny would be good friends with the Butthole Tickling Bandit. I don't know why. Yeah, he probably would be into that. I know he's a butt man. So remember, you know, the guy that licked the doorbells? Oh my God. Yeah. Well, because... We got cause butthole this, lickers. Yeah. Butthole ticklers, doorbell lickers. It kind of feels like the same weirdness. Yeah, it is. I think it is. And remember, it's one of those... It's like the obsession. It's like the thing where you become fixated and then it becomes an obsession and then you can't think of anything else. Why wouldn't you just find someone who wanted you to tickle their butthole, though? <sighs> That's the good. That's a good question. Maybe there's something about it being, uh, like, f- right. not forced upon. There's some. There's something about it. the same w- way as, at like a, you know, a voyeur or somebody who's like a flasher. They yeah. they wouldn't get off if if it's like Someone the element of it. surprise. Yeah. yeah, it's like a big combination of fetishes. Yeah, totally is. Wow. Well, anyway, he's off the streets, everybody. You can rest easy. Oh, my gosh. Sleep can... safely knowing that your butthole won't be tickled. Let that butthole just hang out. It's fine. I mean, the worst thing about that is now I'm thinking, I'm like, I mean, Landon, you know, I wouldn't be mad if he kind of, like, tickled my butthole. Really? Even if you were sleeping? Well, n- not if I'm sleeping. But that I don't want. But, like, yeah. in the middle of sexual... Well, yeah, that's and, fine. You know, fun. Yeah, Sure. Why not? Anything we'll goes. And, right. Whatevs. <laughs> um, oh we my God, have, that's so funny. I remember now what one of my other orders of business was, which is that oh, yeah. we have to revisit fucking Free Solo. Oh, did you see it? Yes. Sues. Okay. Oh, Good. I'm so glad. Sarah. Because the climbing wasn't even the, the big <laughs> story, right? I agree. The, the girlfriend, right? Just all of it, him, her, the relationship. So if you haven't seen it yet, Free Solo is the documentary that won Best Documentary this year at the Oscars, I think. And um, yes. and Sarah had seen it, and she described it. And then our friend Splats, who runs the Brain Candy Crush Facebook group, saw it, and she's like, Susie, you guys have to see this. Oh, she's been to- rock climbing like a maniac, I too. think that's why, because she that's saw awesome. it. Yeah, it Get inspired it, her. Yeah. But, like, I hate him. Yeah. I don't like him at all, Sarah. <sighs> okay. Okay. I think it's important to, like, unpack that. Mm-hmm. Of, like, what it is. Because I think they did a good job in this movie talking about... Uh, they touched a little bit on his childhood and on his upbringing that could make him like that. I guess. 
I I just see nothing but defensive walls going up and the inability yeah. to access emotions and so he's his brain has literally shut them down. Right. And I think there were a few things at play, biological stuff where there he was genetically predisposed to uh yeah. Like, I mean, he's definitely on the spectrum. And his father was autistic or right. had Asperger's. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And, um, you know, his mom definitely said that they have a lot of similar characteristics. And then his father passed away when he was 17. And I don't think anybody talked about it. Yeah. I get that. Mm. And I guess that's why he's so weird about death and sort of being like, if I died, yeah, you might be sad for a minute, but your life goes yeah. on. Like, he's so disconnected yes. from mortality. Yes. Yep. I was just like, I'm not even rooting for this guy. I hope he falls. <laughs> well, and, you know, we <laughs> talked about this. I, I've been thinking about this phrase a lot since I brought it up and then had to, like, yeah. define it and take a look at it about that uh, hedonic treadmill. Yeah. And I think his baseline for happiness is low as fuck. Oh. So, like, he doesn't have any high emotional reaction to anything i think his natural baseline is so low and it's been set there and especially since he has no activity in the amygdala in that fear center that Mm -hmm. he's not getting the kind of stimulation that you would need to um i don't know to to create like a, a more healthy response to any kind of stimuli yeah I just think he he's too good. She's too good for him. There's stuff going on with her, too. Yeah, clearly. It's weird. And it seemed almost like... So there's this one scene where he's about to go climb, and like she knows he's climbing. And it seemed like she really enjoyed being the girlfriend of somebody who could die at any moment. Yeah. And like if he did, she would be fine living as that... Like, I'm also a victim. Like, she seems almost like, I don't know, it's it's bizarre. It's kind of weird to me. Yeah. And, like, what? who hurt her where she has to be in, like, this relationship where there's always, like, one foot out the door, where she never has to be fully invested because he could die at any minute. Yeah, like, and because he's not fully invested either. Right. It's so weird. Um, and how about he, he makes her climb these insane... Climbs right. and then he fell twice with her. And then he blamed her. Yeah. I'm like, dude. And then he d- says that, oh, well, she's not really a climber. Right. Well, fuck you then. Don't take her and don't rely on her and then don't blame her. One thing you can rely on, though, is the ring security system on your home. Yes. And then it could keep you safe from doorbell lickers and butthole ticklers. <laughs> right? So, Ring's mission is to make neighborhoods safer. I'm sure you guys have seen these. If you don't have one, like they go outside your door or around your house and they track, you know, if motion or if somebody's nearby or rings the doorbell and you can interact through your smartphone. Um, They're smart video doorbells and cameras. They protect millions of people everywhere. Um, We have one in our house. It's so handy, especially if you're away and someone's at your door, you get a notification or if God forbid someone's in your house. Um, As a listener, you have a special offer on a Ring Starter Kit available right now with a video doorbell and motion-activated floodlight cam. The Starter Kit has everything you need to start building a ring of security around your home. Just go to ring.com slash brain candy. That's ring.com slash brain candy. Um, Sweet. Yeah, so I I loved the movie. It was so fun to watch, and it re- he is astonishing. And oh man, his skill is unbelievable. It's hard and to I, even really fathom. It really is, you know. And I was I was thinking like I totally forgot about this, and now I'm going to post the video uh, when this episode comes out. But my little bro, I free solo climbed something. What? I climbed the flat irons in Colorado. Wow. How there's was a, that? There's a, there's a climb called, I want to say it's called Freeway or something. I think it's like a 5.6. And he was climbing like 5.12s and 5.11s. So ser- and mm. I, I, I can't remember how high this is. I think the one I climbed was only like five or 600 feet, something like that. But it was the most terrifying thing I've done in my entire life. Really? I, I mean, I couldn't, it was so scary. And my brother and I, like, he was like, we're going to do this. You're going to feel so good about yourself when you're done. He had only done it like once or twice with my bro- other brother. And, 
you know, he's like, my brother Jordan is very cautious, is very like a safe guy. And, you know, he was like nervous as we were doing it. And when he's nervous, I'm like, now I'm terrified. So, you know, we climbed the whole thing. How and, high uh, up were you? I'll look and see how high, how high it was. But it was really, really, I'll go go right now. It was really, really, really high. And there's no ropes. And the craziest freaking thing is I'm an idiot. I don't know why we weren't wearing helmets. We should have, especially since I own one. I, now I'm looking at the pictures, like what I looked at the pictures like last week, like what the Mm -hmm. hell was I thinking? But, um, uh, yeah, it's so scary. And then I was so like, we got to the top and then you hike back down. And then my brothers, we met up with my brother and he was like out you know, he, like in Colorado, they were like taking guns and went to the shooting range and were like shooting things out in the wilderness. I was so like my adrenaline was so high and then crashed that I just fell asleep at the bottom. Like I couldn't, I was exhausted. Even with gunfires going off next to me, I would like crashed. Oh and I God. was so, cause my body was just like, you're done. You're done. This is, that's, that is if as much terrifying. If you had fallen, what would have happened? Terrible Death. injury. Death? Or, or injury. What yeah. were you thinking? Uh, I don't know. <laughs> I wasn't. Like, my brother was like, no, you can do this. It's totally, it's totally fine. It's like, um, oh, I think it was the second flat iron, like the, what is it called? I'm trying to find what it is. I Free just don't understand why anyone boulder, would do second that. Second flat iron, yep. Um, I almost didn't really know what I was getting into when I did it, which was like maybe the first mistake. But, uh, (laughs) you know, I, he was just like, so, and I felt safe because my brother was like with me and, you know, I'm like, okay, he's super safe and he can do it. And yeah, let's see. I would have been the same Oh, it's, it says from the foot of the flat irons, go up straight for about 200 feet. No, no, that's it. Uh, the total (laughs) length is 800 feet. What? What the fuck was I thinking? That is really dumb. (laughs) Yeah, it says experienced climbers often ascend the freeway unroped. This route should not be underestimated, though. As a rule of thumb, class three and four routes on the flat irons are more technically challenging than routes of the same rate. Sandstone slabs have a way of luring the inexperienced into spots from which both progress and retreat suddenly appear problematic. Uh, yeah, so I did that, and now I'm reading it. It says experienced climbers, which uh, I would say I'm an amateur, so <laughs> that was fun. And I totally did the uh, second flat iron freeway climb uh, in, yeah, I'll post that picture because it's pretty Jesus. badass. Yeah. That, I just don't get what the point would be. It's, it's not as steep. I mean, it's not straight up. Once you see like, it, yeah, you can absolutely, it's like a million places. It's 800 feet for Christ's sake. There's yeah. like, you know, it's, it's, it's maybe not super steep all the way up, but in some places you're climbing straight up. And my brother and I always were like, ooh, this is sketchy. Sketchy is like the word for it. Oh and God. we're always on, we're like, ooh, that move is sketchy. That is, you know. We're and, lucky oh, to have can, you. What? We're just lucky to have you still. You yeah, no joke. Dead. Oh, my God. Oh, and now I, I would never do that now, not in a million years. Yeah, because what's the, the reward is not good enough. I mean, it did, it did feel awesome. I did not feel that like, awesome. you know, but man. I'm so glad you didn't die. Yeah. You know, speaking of which, I'm going to put my rock climbing, uh, my climbing ropes up for sale. So <gasps> wow. I recommend them only in gym use. If anybody's interested in buying some rock climbing <laughs> ropes, they've never been used outside. Oh and uh, Why are you selling yeah. them? Well, because I'm not going to, I feel like I'm not going to use them. Wow. You know? And if they sit for too long, then they, the rope wears down and you can't use them anymore because it's not safe. So My God. you're really not supposed to buy used ropes because it's like, you can't <laughs> trust them. That's why I say only for indoor use because you don't want to be falling on some big old Don't mountain. you go dying on me. Right. Oh, oh God. God. That would be awful. <laughs> Sarah. Yeah. Boy, you never know what you got up your sleeve. I can't believe yeah. you're retiring from the bouldering game or whatever the hell it is. Yeah, but not from rock climbing. I'm still going to do that. Okay. Yeah. Um, there's a mystery that I just read about today. Um, in Scotland, there's this bridge that <laughs> dogs keep jumping off of, and people <gasps> think the dogs are committing suicide. What? Yeah. It's um, this bridge. This and, is bizarre. Yeah, it is. And, like, hundreds of dogs have jumped 
to either, you know, injury or death. And people in Scotland think it's haunted and there's this ghost, I forget her name, like White Mary or something, that's convincing. Because the dogs all, like, stop in their tracks and then jump. (laughs) Nope, this is crazy. (laughs) I'm going to have to... What the hell? (laughs) And what, like, can we explain? We need some biological anthropologists, or what are they called? Uh, 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 no, animal behavioralists who need some, to come in there and figure out what the hell is going on. Somebody in the article, I, I forget what kind of an expert it was, was saying their theory was that there was something about the way the bridge, because it's like a tapered bridge, mm-hmm. and that they think that it maybe is creating like an optical illusion or something that's making the dogs miss perceive how much room they have or something other people think they smell mammals down below and like go chasing them but that doesn't really make sense no it doesn't wow i don't know spooky that's about as spooky as it comes yeah because you don't think they're committing suicide do you no what do you think oh my god i there's got to be something. I feel like, you know what? I feel like it is, is a scent. Mm-hmm. I think we need to be, it's an odor. It's something that's confusing their, like, that's what I think. All right. I don't know. No, I mean, what, what do we know? It's got to be something like that. Yeah, it's got to be something that we're not thinking about in the rule, like, you know, this is another thing that I learned in this book, that Lab Girl book, is you can't approach all of the animal world or the plant world or any other world in the same way that you would the human experience. Yeah. And that with anything, it's just like being a person as we think that everybody has, like, our experiences, other people's experience. Well, think about it. it w- it's so different for a different species, and we can't l- look at it through the lens of a human experience, like, oh, they're committing suicide, which is, like, a very human thing. We have to look at it through, like, yeah, like you know, what drives else. their instincts. Totally. Yeah. Yeah, and and kind of, yeah, get rid of our our uh, human bias in a way. Well, one thing that does not have bias is the New Yorker. I love Correct. <laughs> the New Yorker is the best writing in America today, and many, many of the things we talk about on the show come from The New Yorker. In fact, I just read an article in there about, you know, Shen Yun, that uh, Asian, like, oh, yeah. dance troupe? Yes, I sure do. I'm in the middle of an article about it. I'm so into it. Because isn't oh, cool. it the weirdest phenomenon where you always see it um, advertised, but you're like, what is that? Yeah, and it is heavily advertised in the where I live. And the, they're kind of exploring, like, is it a cult? Oh, right? is it? Right? I don't know yet. I didn't finish the article. Wow. But I will report back next week. But New Yorker has something for everyone. Everyone They have uh, stuff about food, about culture, about uh, pop culture and crosswords and uh, travel. They just have something for everyone. And it's some of it are long form, some of it are short. And you can get 12 weeks of the New Yorker for just $6. Plus you get an adorable tote that I use almost every week when we go to the farmer's market. You yeah. just go to newyorker.com slash brain candy. Listeners save 50% off when they enter brain candy. So you get 12 weeks of the New Yorker for just $6 and you get a tote. You have to do this. And they have online version, print version, blah, blah, blah. It's amazing. What a deal. I love our deals. Um, I love a deal too. In fact, that's the perfect segue into some of the deals that I have to share with you guys. Yes, I am so excited. Yes. I actually feel like I'm going to get tips. Okay, so this Products. is... Products. A- yes. Go. Go. Um, okay, so what is your first thing, tip? Okay, first I'm going to start with the two items from the 99 cent store oh, that wow. are absolutely 100% worth it. I'm excited. Oh, I'm actually going to make it three because I just thought of one more. Okay. First one, uh, the best thing that I always stop there and stock up on, screen protectors for your phone. Wow. You know those glass? Yeah. Te- like the tempered glass yeah. sheets? Or, yeah. I have bought those in, at Best Buy, you know, wherever on Amazon. They're usually like 7 to $9, you know? Yes. I 
went to the 99 cent store for something else and found a cover to the iPhone X. And I'm like, wow, that's like the brand new one. And then I looked, they have it to every single iPhone, every single like Samsung, whatever you want. And they're 99 cents. So I just went there last night and I bought four to just keep, you know, stocked in like in case one breaks and they never do. I mean, I I had, until I got a new phone, I had the same screen on it forever. I've seen zero difference in those ones versus the expensive ones. The only thing that I could think of is they don't have that little edge to help you hold yeah. it. But who the fuck cares? I never use that thing anyway. <laughs> that I, is a you know. great tip. Yeah. So 99 cent store, stock up on those. They, I, it's the best deal and it'll save you, you know, you'll save n- like $9 or whatever. I love and that. And then the other uh, item that... We had talked about on another podcast that I couldn't find anywhere and said I was in the market for was a good watering can. Yes. Did you find I one found there? The most perfect metal galvanized, gigantic, like two ga- like big, I think it's either a gallon or two gallons for, you know, some of their products are a little more now. It was two ninety nine, mm-hmm. but it's perfect and it is so adorable and it's cute enough that I now have it displayed in my house. That is really great. So... We got screen protectors and watering cans. That's Those are great. my two uh, uh, inexpensive 99 cent store finds. I want to suggest two things for your beauty routine. One yes. is, I'm sure you already have it. Well, maybe you don't because you have curly hair. But the I think it's Goody brand wet brush is oh. the best brush for like detangling wet hair. And it's like I've five dollars. Wanting to get one of those, mm-hmm. you're actually like the third person to tell me about this, and it's from curly-haired people who have told me. Oh, okay. So maybe it's good for all kinds of hair. Um, yes. But that is such a great tip because it's not expensive, and it is the best one I've ever had. And I think people like me who have that sort of thick, straight, you know, tangly hair. And you have very fine hair. Yeah, you. it's always a problem whenever you get out of the shower and you want to dry your hair because it's just a mess. Um, mm-hmm. And that is a good tip because that brush is cheap and cheerful and it does the job. And then have you seen these towels that you use to take your makeup off? I think the ones my friend Kelly got me are called Erase Your Face. Like have you seen this? disposable Mm-mm. cloths? No, washable. Like an actual towel? Yeah, it's like a really, really soft makeup remover face towel thing no i have not heard of that or seen it tell me about this well if you're like me and wear a shit ton of makeup (laughs) because Mm -hmm. you're getting old or whatever then at night it takes a long time to get all your makeup off it sure does and this thing it's just like for real an eraser of your makeup you just swipe it and off it comes it's amazing it's like a miracle and you don't use any other, like, what do you use? You don't use any, like, makeup remover or anything? Yeah, you can put makeup remover on it or whatever oil or mm-hmm. whatever you use for, like, eye makeup. And then yeah. get my makeup off, and then I do my BioClarity routine where I, oh my you know, God. wash. Yeah. That's a good thing. That's a good one because yeah. I've been, I think I over, I think I scrub too hard. Like, I use oh, the same so soft. scrub for my body on my face, and now I'm, I'm noticing that I've, it's like I'm over exfoliating. And then it oh. makes your skin produce more oil. Yeah, don't do that. Because it's like, yo, you're getting rid of all of it. Here's some more. And then that will make your skin like break out. So that's a really good one. When it's that's quite kind big. of like the secret hair towel. Yeah, you can use it like several, several days before you um you know, need to wash it. And then mm-hmm, you're not wasting mm-hmm. paper as well, like uh cotton buds or yeah. those pads that take your makeup off. And then so. I always get the little cotton things in my eyelashes and yeah. I hate that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this is a good solution. So thanks to Kelly for sending me those because yeah, I love them. That's a good one. Um, okay, what's your next one? Oh, my next one, in sticking with the theme of bathroom stuff, this one I got from you, and I think I've mentioned it on here before, but mm-hmm. it needs to be said again, is the round acrylic Lazy Susan bathroom caddy, or you can use it in whatever area of your house. And yeah. also, I've created an Amazon list with all these products. You are the best. I love that you so, do stuff like that. So that I, I, mean, I made it public so that we can post, I can post this list and you can see all of these items available, you know, lickety split, so just cool. like that. Yeah. yeah. Because it's like, okay, well, she said that, but now where the hell do I find it? And I found the best price for this one on Amazon. 
And uh, it was like half the price of the container store. Oh, wow. And it's just, yeah, yeah. It was v- very well priced. I think they even had a two pack, which now I'm regretting. Oh, I didn't get. <laughs> um, but yeah, round acrylic caddy with then get the larger size with the little compartments. It fits perfectly in the drawer. And I think it's great to separate, um, you know, areas of the face. So I'll have like eyeshadow in one and lip products in another and like tools in another. And it's just a great way to keep things organized. And after you had it in your bathroom, I'm like, what the hell am I bothering with all these individual boxes and all that that I pull out? No, the whole thing. Yeah. Okay. It's great. Loving that. Love it. Oh, one of the tips I wanted to give isn't something you buy. It's um, someone to follow on Instagram. Oh, yeah. And that is, I'm sure you. I've already forced you to follow her, but her name is, well, her name is Jenna Kim Jones. She's a comedian. Oh, yes. We love her. Um, and she has an account called Jenna Tries. It's so funny. And it it makes my day. It's her trying different snacks and um, goodies like uh, Twinkies or whatever, the novelty flavors that they put out all the time. Mm-hmm. And she is so earnest. It cracks me up. Like she'll <laughs> take a bite and then give you like as if she's doing a wine tasting, but it's like yes, a Kit Kat. Yes, it's great. And me and Link watch, Link and I watch every day and he's always like, tell her what this is what he thinks or whatever. And we get so into it. I hope she turns it into an actual TV show. And here's why it's funny to me. Oh, that it would be cute. Right? Like, I think they used to do it on Allison Rosen's podcast where they, I think they called it Snack Chat <laughs> and they would talk about snacks. But um, she, Jenna Kim Jones is Mormon and I've always been fascinated with how Mormon folks tend to be really into treats like snack Mm -hmm. treats because, you know, they don't drink and they don't even usually drink caffeine, Mm -hmm. although Jenna does. Um, And so they've, they're really passionate about the vice of snacks. Yep. And so it really tickles me that she's turned this sort of personal passion into something we can all enjoy. Chet from my show was also equally obsessed. And yes. I think one year for Christmas, I got him a two pound bag of just the marshmallows from Lucky Charms. <laughs> no. I found that somewhere. That's a great gift. Yeah. I, for a while, like I was into getting, like he and I were, were, you know, closer than we used to be. I think in the recent political climate, he's just, yeah, you know, but yeah. We used to send each other like funny Christmas and I always would send him a card on either a birthday or Christmas, but it, that wasn't a birthday card. So it'll be like, happy quinceanera or, <laughs> you know, congratulations yeah. on your new baby boy or, you know, <laughs> stuff like that. Or like, I'm sorry for your loss, <laughs> whatever it was. <laughs> send him a card that wasn't a birthday card, That's which funny. I think is a hilarious thing to do if you have one of those friends. Like, yeah. I used to do that too. That is, that always makes people laugh. Mm-hmm. I think it's great. I'm a, big on the on getting the perfect car, greeting cards. A great gift that you can give yourself is to get lower interest rates on your credit cards because Lord knows what your interest rate actually is. And Lightstream wants to help you with that problem of getting a lower rate and saving money. You can refinance your credit card balances and save with a credit card consolidation loan from Lightstream. You get a fixed rate as low as 6.14% APR, and they give you the loan between five dollars and $100,000 with no fees, and you can even get your money the same day as you apply. It's super easy to apply online. If you want to save even more, our listeners get an additional interest rate discount. The only way to get the discount is to go to lightstream.com slash brain candy, L-I-G-H-T-S-T-R-E-A-M dot com slash brain candy, subject to credit approval. Rate includes a 0.50 auto pay discount. Terms and conditions apply and offers are subject to change without notice. Visit lightstream.com slash brain candy for more information. Perfect. Um, okay. What is next on your list? Let me see. Oh, one of my things on this list, uh, is a recent purchase that, uh, your husband inspired me to get a long time ago. Um, but I've only recently, you know, actually followed through and bought it. Um, but there are these little leather cord wraps. Yes. Available on Amazon. And it matters which for your headphones. Yes. And it matters which one you get because I've tried other ones that are like silicone. And there's something about silicone material that like attracts every piece of lint in your bag <laughs> and then also like gets stuck to the material 
that the cords are made out of. What the goddamn hell is on those iPhone cord headphones that makes them so sticky? And why would they do that? I know. It's, I, I just, I hate unraveling that. So finally, like, I borrowed Landon's headphones when we were on the plane, and he handed them to me, and they were in a jumble, and I'm like, oh my God, I can't take it. So at that very moment, I paid the Wi-Fi, which I never do, because I'm like, that's highway robbery, but I paid the $12 for the two-hour flight I had to have Wi-Fi the whole time, mm-hmm. because one hour was $10, and I'm like, oh, yeah. <laughs> it's a two-hour flight, I gotta pay the extra two. I'm right. like, I hate having to pay for shit like that, because I'm like, Duh, take my money, fine. And uh, But it's okay, they gave me free wine, so it all evened out in oh, my mind. Oh, that's good. Yeah, I went to go pay for the wine, she's like, no, it's on us, and then she was like, would you like two? And then I said no like an idiot. That's the dumbest thing you've ever done. What the hell did I do that for? <laughs> Why? Why? I was like, Why? Because I was like three. I was on the. Uh, I was in the window seat, and there were like two other older people sitting next to me, and I was like scared they were going to judge me. What the hell was I worried about? I am shocked at you. Meanwhile, the lady in the middle is taking up both armrests, and she doesn't <laughs> care about anything. So she. I needed I, that wine. You know, I gotta say, I feel like the middle person should be allowed to have both armrests. Yeah, I gave it to her, and I just leaned over. Yeah, yeah that's correct. I think that's that's fine. I got it. I got it. That's why I didn't complain. But I would have been even more easygoing with the, with if I had two glasses of wine. But anyway, so I so long funny. story short, I log on to Amazon, and the first thing I do is go purchase these headphone wrap things because they'd been in my cart, and I'm like, why didn't I just get? Why didn't I just buy this a million years ago? Wow. And they're little. They're these leather square wraps that have a little buckle. You open up, you wrap the headphones around it, and then you close it up. And also, there are these Velcro strips that you can use to keep cords wrapped up. Get yes, them. yes, yes. We have those. Yeah, there's a pack. I will. It's on the list of like. And these 30. things are cheap, by the way. Yeah, they're like six dollars for a pack of thirty. Yeah. Yeah, and so and they come in like five different colors, so you can use them. Like everybody in your house can have a different color, which I like to do because Landon yeah. and I are always like, "Who's is this? Who's is that?" No, you borrowed mine. So now I put I use those little, um, like the wasabi, not wasabi, washi, or however you say it, tape. Oh yeah, you know that Japanese tape that yeah. like comes in the pretty colors. I don't know why I call it wasabi tape, but it feels like it's spelled similar. <laughs> and uh, I m- put. I wrap it around the cord and I wrap it around the charger and I wrap it around the headphones so you know what color is, you know. I'm like, oh, no, mine's the blue with the stars. Mm -hmm. Yours is the red. I love that. Yeah. It's those little things. Everybody knows. Yeah, they make life better. They really do. So that is on my list. Another thing that I want to encourage people to do that is free and Mm -hmm. super awesome is follow your local library on Twitter or, oh. um, you know, whatever social channel you like to use. Because if you're not a regular at the library, you forget all the awesome things that they offer. Yes. And so if you just get reminders of like, oh, the, you know, for example, this month uh, is Women's History Month, or actually, well, March was. And um, they'll say like, we're doing a reading of this book and this female author is coming and you know it it's a nice thing to be in the know because then if you want to go you can go it's always free usually and I mean it's just such a nice thing to be a part of your community and I just am yeah. obsessed with libraries <laughs> yes and I think people are busy and they forget that they have this resource that you know their taxes help pay for so you might as well take advantage of that a perfect thing if you're a mom and you're like, what do I do with my kids today? And you could go to the library and you can read and then somebody will read to your kids. Yeah. They do crafts. Yeah. They have one yes. time they brought in um, ballet dancers for like the Christmas season and Lincoln oh, went cool. to see them. And they do all kinds of awesome things. These people are working so hard and they want you to take advantage of it. They yes, don't and they're excited to, to share their info with you. Yeah. So that's something I would encourage you to do is like just find your local library and just follow them on Twitter or whatever and you'll see, oh, this week they're doing this thing. Maybe we'll stop over or whatever. I love that one. And yeah. that kind of fits with with this one of, of thing like um, mom resources or dad resources uh, or just good for you resources. Uh, I told Susie about this one last week because she told me that her son Lincoln started playing baseball. And so I told Sue, and yep. you know, anytime and we, we have took a kid your advice, like, oh, good. Mm-hmm. There is the best store 
called Play It Again Sports. Yep. And they do have them nationwide. I thought it was just a California thing, but I, yeah. there's, they are in every state, almost, I think. And they are stores that sell used sporting equipment that you can take your old stuff to and sell or trade in or buy or whatever. And they some stores specialize in um, like outdoor uh, sports. So they'll have like all the ski and snow and surf stuff. And some of them specialize in team sports. So they have all your baseball bats, all your gloves, all the th- even like uniforms and you name it. And it is dirt cheap. Yeah. It really is. We after what you did you find us, there, Suze? We Lincoln's interested in being a catcher, and oh, cool. oh, that comes with a lot. That's what. Oh my God, that's what Landon was. Oh, Landon see? was a catcher, and they went to the same elementary school. Yes, isn't that crazy? That's crazy. Yeah. So he, you know, catchers have to have a special outfit, and you know, we didn't want to pay tons of money. That's he so might expensive. quit in two weeks. Who knows? And he also is going to grow. Yeah. So I said, Sarah said. There's a played against sports nearby. We went there and got everything we needed super cheap. Yes. And I was yes. like, she is amazing. Oh, that makes me, there's nothing I love more than being the deliverer of information <laughs> that leads to somebody getting a good deal yeah. <laughs> and saving money. Like I love to be the, the, the passer alonger of info. Well, even though I've lived here four years, I still feel like I'm visiting. So in oh, Pittsburgh, yeah. that would have been our first stop, but it just didn't occur to me that there was one nearby or that they, you guys had them out here. And so I was glad you said something. Yeah. And that one is a good one because it specializes in all that team sport stuff. Yeah. And I'm and freaking always in favor of like reduce, reuse, recycle. Like if you can find yes. something used, go for it. I got all my snowboard <laughs> gear there. Oh yeah. I was telling Adam that you were, I didn't know if you had success, if you found what you I, needed. Tons of success. By the way, you're really good at snowboarding. Uh, Suze, thank you. Why are you so I humble? also discovered that I'm really good at snowboarding <laughs> on this trip. Are you like suddenly good at it or what? <laughs> what? Okay, so I went like a year and a half, uh, like I guess almost, maybe it might be two years ago now that I went on a trip up to Tahoe with my friend Morgan, shout out to Morgan. And, um, sh- sh- you know, we had, I'd gone snowboarding for like, 10 years, maybe I've been snowboarding, maybe a little more. Um, but, uh, uh, I, you know, was always a little nervous and I feel like I didn't understand the mechanics of it. But then when I went with Morgan, I looked at some videos of people snowboarding and I just was more aware of what other people were doing and looking at like, what is my board supposed to look like in the snow? And something clicked. All of a sudden I was like, oh, I'm supposed to move my back foot like this. Oh, and wow. ever since then it was like magic. And it, it wasn't difficult. It was like, oh, that's easy. Really? And it's so, I mean, not easy, but like I got it. Like I was doing, I was just doing the wrong thing. And I, I think the mistake was I had gone to a long time ago, I had taken a lesson and I got so stuck in the way that they were teaching me the lesson that that wasn't really what worked for me. And once I kind of got out of my head and was like, I need to learn this and study it the same way I do anything else, you know, and like learn the mechanics of it. And once I did, I was like, oh, this is really awesome and fun. And then, uh, yeah, that, and you know, I, I just had a shit ton of fun and my brothers are so encouraging. They're really good. I mean, like insanely good snowboarders Hmm. and like my one brother, Luke can I'm sh- do like tricks and stuff. Wow. Like flips and all that, you name it. Like you can go off the jumps and it's crazy cool. So they were being all nice and going down like the easy runs with me. And then after like two of those, they took me on some of the, you know, bigger ones. And I went on a freaking black diamond. Oh my and a, God. And a Tahoe black, a veil black diamond, which is like a double black diamond anywhere else. Sarah. And yeah. I was like, damn. I keep. I, I, I feel d- like you're cheating death all the time now. No, this one. You know what it was like. I I had less fear on this trip because I was like, I have health insurance, and also if I <laughs> fall, I don't risk losing, like not going on a challenge or something. You know, before yeah. I was like, okay, I'm paying for this out of pocket because I don't have health insurance, and also like I need future challenge work. So if I fall and break my leg, I'm out of work for. Whatever. And now I'm like, yeah, whatever. I'm probably Were not you fall. sore afterwards? Suze, uh, 
let me tell you, <laughs> I took about three or four falls oh, and wow. I kept falling on the same spot because, you know, it was like one turn that I couldn't, like, uh, I, I don't know whether it was like my heel side turn that I just couldn't get at a, and I even fell on the same spot in the same run three times and like at, by the fourth time my brothers were like here's the spot it's coming don't fall <laughs> and oh then God. so I fell a few times the next morning I felt like I was hit by a fucking truck oh no. I couldn't even sleep and I was so sore on the uh like halfway through the day I, I you know after lunch I was talking to my brother and I'm like man I am using muscles I have not used in like two years and he said oh yeah snowboarding you know that you work a bunch of different muscles. I'm like, no, no, no. I'm talking about the regular ones, like hamstrings and glutes. <laughs> <laughs> Those ones, like the regular muscles. Really? I was, I was so sore I couldn't sleep. And like my, you know, from my, my traps were so, I was even telling, I'm like, what is this muscle? He's like, that'd be your trap. I'm like, why is that sore? When did I use my arms? And just wow. like, F-. yeah. So I was really sore, but it, it, I forgot how good it felt to feel, be yeah. sore. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I used our coupon code and got my uh, membership again to um, Open Fit. Yes. And I'm doing the 10 minute workout. Like, this like wasn't even commercial, but you know, I'm just, you know. <laughs> telling that's what I did and so now I've been doing like 10 minutes because I'm like I, I gotta start slow so I did 10 minute the you know butt ones and butt that's nap or whatever thing. I've been doing it for like the past you know three days and I'm feeling really good and Isn't my butt it? is sore but I love it yeah. I missed being sore yeah I t- you know what's r- this is like a sad confession <laughs> I'm Please like go. I, I'm hesitant to even say it um you know how we've been going bowling lately <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> uh, the first time we went, it had been years since I had gone. I swear to God, the next day my hand was sore. Oh, I believe it. I believe it. I was like, this is rock bottom. Yep. How does your hand get out of shape? Oh my God, Suze, ain't that the truth? I had a day where I was holding my phone and like just scrolling through Instagram and my arm was sore from Sarah. holding my phone. And I'm like, one of two things is happening here. <laughs> I've spent way too much lo- time scrolling through Amazon or I really need to work out my arms. <laughs> my God. Well, and I had read recently that um, grip strength is a really good predictor of overall health. And yes. I was like, this is tragic. <laughs> Oh my God. And then I used to have the strongest grip when I rock climbed. Yes. Oh, I don't have that anymore. Oh my God. Got, and my dog is all of a sudden getting heavier. And I'm like, whoa. <laughs> and I, he's not getting heavier. I'm getting weaker. <laughs> oh my God. It's kind of depressing though, because I'm very goal oriented. And so yeah. the problem with working out <laughs> is that you're never done. Uh huh. You're never like, okay, I've hit my goal and now I don't have to work out anymore. <laughs> yeah, that's true. But you can like, you know what it is, is once you've hit your goal, I think the, if you've done it right, you make lifestyle changes along the way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it, you don't have to work as hard. You know, I struggled with um, learning healthier eating habits. I won't even say with weight because it was just yeah healthy eating habits that, mm-hmm. and my unhealthy eating habits led to me gaining a lot of weight. You know, like you shouldn't order an entire large pizza at 11 <laughs> o'clock at night and eat the whole thing in the dark, you know, stuff like that. In the dark. Yeah. I don't know why that's an important detail, but, uh, uh, you know, so once I changed like my eating habits, I didn't have to worry as much about like, oh, that fear of like, going back to where you came from or yeah. whatever, yeah. you know, slowly starts to subside. But, you know, I talk about this with my husband too, because he's very, he's like, he's very goal oriented. He sets a goal for himself and he's like, you know, yeah. once, and, and what happens, what I talk to him about, which I've seen big changes with him is what usually happens. It'll be like a big swing in one direction and then a big swing in the no- in another direction. Yeah. So he'll go from like being on the road and, you know, he works in the wine business. So it's like drinking wine, eating all these great dinners to then coming home and going, I'm on a juice cleanse for a week and you yeah. know, blah, blah, blah. And sometimes when he hits his goal is even though you think, oh, when I hit my goal, then it'll be like smooth sailing. By hitting the goal, that creates a new level of anxiety. Like it's, it's important to um, like kind of like keep 
resetting goals and and keep um you know changing them and updating them and you know in your mind or on paper or however you do it because a lot of anxiety for people come from that moment where they hit the goal and then don't know what to do. Mm -hmm. They're like, okay, now I've made all these changes, but this, I said I'd go here and then I would maybe stop. And then they just like almost kind of fall off the wagon. So if you can manage that moment where you achieve that goal and then keep it going, then you'll have consistent changes for long, longer. It's so true. That was long winded, but no, but it's, it's absolutely true. And it's kind Mm -hmm. I kind of feel like that about, you know, like the Marie Kondo craze. I think people think of it as like, you just purge everything or whatever, and then you're done. But anybody that's organized will tell you it is a daily ritual and process. It's not like you're done. And then that's the end of the story. But that show kind of encourages more like a binge approach but then you still have to maintain it. Yeah, it's the same as ha- having like a juice fast for a week, and then you gotta like, yeah, you can't it's just, just do a that reset. and then be right. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. You know, the I've been thinking about this a lot about, um, you know, with mental health and working out, and you know, people's ideas on on those things. Like a lot of times in in therapy or in any work with mental health, people think that it's there's going to be an aha moment, and all of a sudden, like life is going to get better and things are going to change and it's going to be like a light switch or something. And, you know, it's, I think for everything, for organizing, for, um, happiness, for, uh, physical health, for mental health, for nutri- you know, nutritional health, all that stuff, we have to have the same idea, the same approach. Like it's slow growth over time. Mm-hmm. You don't go to the gym once and then you have abs you know, you see slow changes over time. And I think with some, I was just having this discussion with somebody the other day, especially with mental health, there's no mental health version of staring in the mirror and seeing abs. Yeah. So a lot of times people will say, man, my life is going really well. I'm almost waiting for the other shoe to drop. Uh, Like things are too good right now. And so they'll in a way create some chaos where it doesn't need to happen or mm -hmm. it doesn't need to be because they're like, this is, this is not, how things normally are. It would be like getting abs and then being like, well, this isn't normal. I better eat a pizza. Yeah. Well, you know, Mm -hmm. and we have to remind ourselves that those good feelings are like mental health version of abs and how it's not all of a sudden, boop, you wake up and you have them. It's like slow changes over time. Like, and you have to maintain it. I think Mm -hmm. you said it best with the organizing. You have, with everything you do, you have to maintain it. Mm Mm-hmm. And that's coming up with a routine and coming up with a, you know, like a, a system. Yeah. I love how Whether we... it's practicing gratitude in the morning. That yeah. was one of my other things that I was going to share. Another product I have that's called the Calm the Chaos Journal. Oh. And it's like a little daily journal that you do um, at like at night. And it has like today I, and these little bubbles of like ate nutritious meal, moved my body, did something nice for somebody else. And it's almost like a checklist of well-being. Yeah, that I love that idea. Yeah. And I find that if I just get the journal and keep it next to, you yeah. know, keep it out like where we have, um, you know, where we eat our meals yeah. and stuff, then I will tend to use it. To I think it, it'll even just remind you if you just see it. Yes. Amen. Yeah. I yeah. And I got the keep... idea for that from my friend Allie who's at the clinic. So shout out to shout Allie. Shout out Thank to you Allie. For that. Yeah. I love how we keep ending our show on these like inspirational moments. It's like when, oh, good. what's his face? Uh, who's that guy that had the talk show that was real trashy? Jerry something. Oh, Jerry Springer. Like, yeah. what does he say? His final word, final, final thoughts. thoughts. <laughs> yeah, that's totally us. Well, we're, we have we're, an ending like that. Yeah, we'll leave you with that inspirational thing. And you're so right. So thanks for the reminder. Yeah. And, don't and I to will subscribe. Uh, I will next week talk about my fancy items. There. Yes. I'm so yes. excited for more of these tips. Yes. All right, guys. Thanks we'll see you sharing. next time. Bye. Bye. This podcast is brought to you by Wave Podcast Network. Check out all of our shows, including the Brain Candy Podcast, I Don't Get It, Coffee Convos, and Let's Talk About It. 